Hello, I'm Michelle. And I'm Toby. And we work in the City of London Corporation's health and safety team, where it's our job to help keep people safe here in the global financial centre that is the Square Mile. Industrial rope access, sometimes called abseiling, is a growing industry and is commonly used for window cleaning and maintenance here in the city. The aim of this brief video is to assist building and facilities managers in asking some of the right kind of questions when selecting rope access contractors. This video focuses on competence. There will be a second video focusing on reviewing risk assessments and method statements. Check our website for details. The consequences of any accidents or failures at height can be fatal. Rope access has its advantages, but there may be safer alternatives that you should consider. Are you choosing working from ropes because it seems easier or cheaper? Working from a rope looks straightforward, but involves significant risks, which the work at height regulations would generally require you to prevent in the first instance. So working from the ground, or some kind of elevated platform, such as a cradle or cherry picker, is often preferable. If rope access remains the best option, you will need to consider who undertakes the work and how you decide that they are competent. Accreditation schemes such as IRATA provide assurance that companies and operatives are qualified, but other experience and training for example, to recognise standards such as ISO 22846 and British Standard 8454 may be relevant too. You need to ask the right questions of your rope access provider before they start working on site in order to check that they are competent. Let's look at what you need to know. The competency of your contractors will depend on the nature and technicality of the work intended. Unusual facades may require a higher level of rigging and emergency rescue expertise. Training is crucial to that competence, so you need to ask for evidence of qualifications. There should always be at least two people in any rope work team, and at least one should be suitably qualified to act as a supervisor. This person needs a higher level of competence and training because they will usually be involved in planning the specific detail of the work, such as deciding what anchor points will be used or how certain facades will be descended. They should also take a role in ensuring that rigging is done correctly and safely. In the IRATA scheme, you must be level 3 to undertake this work. IRATA training is a minimum of a five-day assessed course on the theory and practice of rope access for even the lowest level 1 training. Those at the higher end, levels 2 and 3, will have logged thousands of hours on the ropes and attended many more courses. But some courses from other suppliers may only last two or three days. You will need to check if the syllabus is appropriate for the work required on your building. And having a basic level of training certificate does not make someone an expert. It's simply the minimum needed to be working safely on the ropes. Equally, the highest level of training certificate does not make someone a structural engineer who can make judgments about structural loads of anchor points for the work they are planning. Questioning the level of training of those coming to your site and making sure their answers are appropriate before work commences is key. And it is always wise to get copies of any training records your contractor mentions. You'll also need to check their risk assessment, but we've covered that in detail in another video. So in summary, make sure that you ask your abseilers about their levels of training. And go further than that by checking that you are satisfied that they are competent to do the actual work that they are undertaking, such as planning a job or supervising the work of others. You might just be helping to prevent a serious accident.